Shalom brothers, uh, this is GMS Smith Destroyers, brothers from Mississippi camp, um, I'm Awar, Sahab, and basically what we gonna do today is crush these goons from ISUPK, another one of their lies, it's not the chip, it's um, the woman concerning Mark 7 and 26 and the one in Matthew 15. The, the uh, lady that he said was a Syrophoenician or a Canaanite. Guess what they're saying? They're saying that it's an Edomite. So, we're going to expose one of these lies, make quick work of it, and be done with it. Get um, Mark chapter 7. Start at verse 22. Mark chapter 7, verse 22. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness. Go uh, Verse 23. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Verse 20. Oh, yeah, 25, 25. Mark 7 and 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would... Now, they take that Greek and they run with it. Now this guy Kodala Mav, his YouTube name is this is a what Captain Kodala Mav, he's one of Johanna's goons or flunkies. His uh YouTube name is Isaiah Priest. He's all over our, um my page basically talking shit saying that um basically just talking crazy. Saying that about white women and all that BS, man. I asked him the question about this, and he says that this lady is a, a so-called white woman. And basically the Lord said, you know, uh, go ahead. Verse 26. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Yahweh said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Mm -hmm. And she said, excuse me, and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. All right, now let's backtrack it. Now that you got an understanding, brothers got an understanding of the story, go back to verse... Um, 26. Mark 7 and 26. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. Okay. That's all we need. It said that the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. Now, I don't know how the hell they got a white woman out of this uh, when it says Syrophoenician by nation. But the word Greek there, if you uh, go back to the Greek and look up that word Greek, go back to the root words. The word there is Hellenist. And uh, you got a definition written down? Mm -hmm. Yep. I got Hellenist, and it goes to Hellenist days. Yeah, this is what Hellenist means. Go ahead. It's from the uh, online, the Blue Letter Bible. Hellenist, one who imitates the manners and customs of the worship of the Greeks. Right, and you know what Blue Letter Bible actually goes off when you when it speaks on Hellenists, yep. because they actually, for that particular lady, they'll tell you that she wasn't a Jew, she was a Gentile. Then they'll say, then if you look up Hellenists for another one, they'll say that it really didn't apply to just Jews, it was all nations. Yeah, they make sure that's, that's inserted in there. Right, because they know who the Jews are, but basically Hellenists, you could look up uh, topical uh, Bible.org You can look it up Or you can get the Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary It's in there, right? Hellenist means uh, In TopicalBible.org It'll tell you Hellenist means uh, Greek Speaking Or Grecian Jews That's what it means do you want me to get that account in Maccabees when they first started to follow Greek customs? Nah. Um, 
because our people took on the customs of these Greeks. Uh, our people today, these two thirds and uh, these people that's blinded would be considered Hellenists. And um, and in the Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, it'll tell you Jews that adopted the customs of the Greeks. It gets straightforward. So that woman was a Jew that adopted the customs of the Greeks. That's all it was. She was a Hellenist. Now go to Matthew 15, uh, start at verse 22, so we can get the other account of this woman. Matt so, as you became, you're wrong again. Once again. Once again. You was wrong about the chip. You was wrong about the white woman. Or you was wrong about... Uh, the 501c3. <laughs> yeah, the 501c3 charter. You was wrong about the New Testament being written in, <laughs> in the Greek. Being... Uh, Trans, wait, it was written down only in the Greek instead of the Hebrew. All right, go ahead. Now you're wrong about this. This is Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. Right. So the disciples were like, send this lady away. This is the same account itself from a different point of view, Matthew's point of view. So the disciples were like, man, send her away, man. <laughs> the Lord ain't said anything yet. Go ahead. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There you go, right there. He was giving you a hint. That's an Israelite. That's why he didn't leave or send her away. He, when the disciples were saying send her away, he was like, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's because she was an Israelite, man. Go ahead. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which, which fall from their master's table. And heathens are called dogs, man. You call heathens dogs. What was our people being? A bunch of damn heathens, man. But you can't jump that hurdle, man. Go ahead. Then Yahawashai answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And notice, and this was very important because the Lord said, O woman, great is thy faith. Now only Israelites can have faith, and we approve that through the scriptures. Where in the scriptures has Esau ever had faith? Or Hamite, or any of these other nations had faith? None. Alright, get uh, Galatians 3 and 6. Galatians 3 and 6. Even Abraham believed the Most High, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Verse 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Exactly. They, would, they that are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Alright. They that are of faith, the same as those... Those are the righteous. Those are the Israelites. <laughs> yeah, because it says, uh, I can't say exactly, I think it's in Romans, that faith is a gift. Mm -hmm. So faith is an inherent gift to the sons of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Like the brother said, the other nations can't have faith because they didn't inherit that. Right. Their spirit bears witness with our spirit. Yep. All right. Precept. Um, no, you go. No. All right, and that's basically unless you got a precept, that's that's basically it on that man. You you shouldn't need to hear anymore. What more do you need? Let me get uh, Matthew ten five and six. Yeah, you can get it. 
Alright, here's Matthew 10, 5, and 6. And all these precepts that were pulling out in the New Testament, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew 10. They couldn't look up the word Greek to find out that was Hellenist? But yeah. guess what? General Gehenna, well, Esau, actually came from the line of Abraham. Well, he'll probably say some, pull some shit out of his ass, man. Yeah, the, the disciples were basic when they saw this Syrophoenician Phoenician woman. She probably had on Greek attire. It was like, man, what don't deal with her, Lord. You know, <laughs> she probably had on Greek attire. She didn't look like a Israelite woman in customs. Yeah, the, the disciples were small in the scriptures. Yeah, whatever, nigga. Go ahead. Matthew 10, 5. These twelve Yahweh shot sent forth commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and unto any city of the Samaritans, into you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right, go not in the way of the Gentiles. Go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, man. So if the Lord looking down on Edomite saying, Great is thy faith, that means that you saying the Lord was uh was down there trying to heal Edomites, man. You you're a freaking clown, man. You're a clown. All right. Now, moving on to the next topic. What's up with this white woman thing, man? What's up with you niggas' obsession with somebody popping a white woman, man? And the majority of brothers not even popping white women, man. Nor lusting after no white woman. It's just the fact that you can. And you're being a bunch of freaking... Idiots going and spamming everybody's page talking about, yeah, baby rapers. Popping, popping the uh, white woman. You popping the white woman. That's selling out. How, since when was the 501c3 selling out? It's not uh, teaching that you could pop white women selling out. Then you, then you niggas are so carnal and so uh, non-spiritual and so damn grimy. You coming on my page, on our page, talking about El Tahar's mama, man. She's not the ones cursing you out, man. <laughs> but you, you guys are a bunch of a bunch of jokes, man. You guys are a bunch of jokes, and the Most High is gonna kill every last one of you. Matter of fact. Let's go ahead and crush this woman thing real quick. You got this guy, Yako, Yako Flocka, who he's old news. He put out a video uh, specifically aimed at me. And, of course, had the elders in it. Um, because of the uh, teaching that you can pop a white woman. All right. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and get this. Uh, I got a piece uh, up. Yeah, go ahead. This is this is Deuteronomy twenty one and ten. When thou goest forth to war against thy enemies, and the Most High thy power hath delivered them into thy hands, and thou hast taken them captives, and see is among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her that thou wouldst have her to thy wife, then thou should bring her home to thy house. And she shall shave her head and pare her nails. She shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thy house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. Right. And you know what? That's, that's any woman. Because a woman is nothing. She's a possession. Alright? But you know what? They, they try to say that we can't deal with them because we're in captivity. When that's not true. That's not true at all. Then you're talking about guys, you're talking about half-breeds. You're walking around calling guys half-breeds, man. Like, what the hell is wrong with you, man? You obviously don't know the scriptures. Uh, go to Judges, uh, I believe it's round 14. The story of Jephthah. Let me see. 
Yeah, that was kind of justice, man. Oh, it's 11. <laughs> you calling El Tahar half breed, all this, and you. If a man's an Israelite, a man's an Israelite. It don't matter who his mama was, all right? The seed goes by the father. Yeah, start at the top. This is Judges chapter 11, verse 1. <clears throat> now, Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. He was the son of a harlot. Now, wait a minute. They always talking about you can't mess with prostitutes. His daddy was messing with prostitutes. And in the time of Judges, they was all in slavery. And, go ahead. And Gilead's wife bare him sons. And his wife's, his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. That sound like ISUPK, don't it? That sound like you group of goons, man. Look up the word goon on dictionary.com and you'll see why I keep calling you that, man. It said, uh, because he's the uh, son of a stranger, talking about his mama. So his mama not only was a prostitute or a harlot, so to speak, but she was also of another nation. And in the time of Judges, all we was experiencing was slavery. Can I get this piece up? And guess what? If you read on down the line, oh, you don't need to, um, but Jephthah was a man of the Most High. The Most High chose him to be a judge over Israel. You simple-ass nigga. All right, go ahead. Here's the precept. Or well, to another point. Judges 16 and 1. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw there in Harlot and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him in all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. But the point is, he went to the Philistines in the land of Gaza and not only dealt with the woman that was a Philistine, but she was a harlot. Mm-hmm. Wait, matter of fact, we was under we was under the Philistines. Was yep. And his first wife, he was like, I don't want an Israelite wife, I want a Philistine wife. Yep. And guess what? The Lord set that up. So what do you niggas have to say about that, man? What do you have to say about Moses with the Ethiopian wife? And what do you have to say about Moses' sister when she spoke on that? Mm-hmm. About what happened to her. Yeah, yeah, about what happened to her, right? See, the Most High is going to destroy you guys, man. They big that stuff up because they know how somebody that doesn't know what's going on will perceive that. <gasps> the mm -hmm. black Hebrew Israelites said they mess with white women. What did they say about young women? What did they say about sleeping with harlots? Because somebody that is not familiar with this truth, they're going to look at it like, what's going on? Right. Matter of fact, go ahead and get it. What is it, 1 Corinthians 7? Let's crush your last lie, man. Wait, that's another thing they're going off on, man. Saying a 12-year-old. Look, we don't mess with no 12-year-olds, all right? And plus, that would be dumb as hell in this society to try to go around and get you a 12-year-old. You're a freaking, you're going to go to jail, man. Or to force your... Man, you, you, you people are, are stupid and you strain at a gnat, man. You, you, you are a bunch of dumb goons, man. I'm telling you. Because Paul said it. Alright, here's 1 Corinthians 7. And 36, but if any man think that he behaved himself uncommonly toward his virgin, and she passed the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will, and he sinneth not. Let them marry. That's it. And if I, what's it like? But nobody's going to get a 12-year-old, man. 12-year-olds aren't even developed, man. They look like little girls. And if I could, if I could uh, expound on this scripture, uh, when it says a flower of the age, when something is in this flower, that means it blossom. Mm -hmm. Even when you see a woman that starts to develop, 
you know, her parents say she's starting to blossom. Also, it represents something being ripe. Now, when something is ripe like a fruit, it's ready to be plucked. Right. So the most I don't go by ages in 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. he, he, he shows you signs. She's ready to be plucked. Right. Well, like uh, the brother she, said. She, she gets her period. Yep. That's when she sign. gets that, she's able to get pregnant. Cause, yeah. Just like when you was a young man, we're all men. You was it was one day. You was probably around the house or at a store, or wherever you was. And next thing you know, some white shit came out of you, or you woke up in the middle of the night from a dream. That means that you you're a man now. You're able to go get a, another woman and reproduce now. That's what that means. But you, you goons can't understand that, man. You can't understand that because you, because the Most High uh, has blinded you. All right, you were saying something. That was the point. That was it. Right. And I even told my woman how how ridiculous you guys are. She was like, "Well, when a girl do hit." That age, she is able to, you know, go off and have babies and stuff. And that's that's when they're that's when they're active. Right. Yeah. So why? So it's not that a guy gonna go and get a twelve year old man. We just speaking the fact for truth's sake. And it's not that every man, when he found out that rape is righteous, he gonna go out and rape a woman in America. Right. Because if you being wise as a serpent and homeless as a dove, when you're not. And it's not that every man is going to try to pursue a woman of another nation. But the point is, all of that is lawful, man. Right. Oh, yeah. And the point we was bringing out earlier this week, the black woman is a heathen, man. Yeah. Why are you talking about, yeah, you're messing with them white women. The, okay, the black woman dyes her hair blonde, perms it, has it straight just like the so-called white woman. She dresses like the white woman. She hangs and tries she hangs around and tries to talk like the white woman. She celebrates Christmas, Easter, uh, Thanksgiving, all these things, man. Yeah. And it says your wife should be a harlot in the city. Why are you talking about people messing with prostitutes? So yeah. she is a fucking uh white woman, man. Just like uh, how they call them Greeks and Gentiles in here. She's a damn Greek, man. She's a Roman. She's walking around here being a heathen, man. Yeah, so sure. what would be the difference between her and a so-called white woman? <laughs> right. Nothing. Except the white woman probably going to treat you better, man. The white woman going to do a better job of being a white woman. Right. <laughs> Ezekiel 11 and 12. And you shall know that I am the most high, for you have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. Right. Done after the manners of the heathen, man. Yep. So, yeah, this, in this short amount of time, you guys have been, uh, your little doctrine, or whatever you think you, you're trying to fool Israel with, has been plucked apart, man, by the elders and by other brothers in this video, all right? And if it never got to him, and that, that video, what, weeks old, man, back from November, I believe, mm -hmm. if that never got to this, to this goon, Kodala Moth, who was on the, it, it was about two years ago, and it, I have a witness on the phone that you know, said the things that you said. And you actually said that on March 7th that she was a white woman on the comment board, man. So don't lie now. If I could say this before we close it up, speaking on the whole eating white woman thing, um, like I said, the reason why we couldn't deal with the women, or the most high didn't want us to deal with the women back then, because the women of the other nations worship the gods of the other nations. And like the brother said, our women are heathens because those same Entities, those same deities that the women worship back then, now our women worship back uh, now. 
When you go to church on Sunday, who you worship by all the sun gods, Semiramis is Tammuz. And where does the black woman go? And where, church. And where does she drag the black man? Mm -hmm. So basically, because he told you, it, you that was going to turn your heart to the mother gods. So when you see Jake up in these churches, the woman has basically dragged them in them churches. So like the brother was saying, they're no different from a heathen. Right. How many of Jake's followed out the truth because of the black woman? Jake followed out the truth for a black bitch, man. And he ends up right back in the church. Mm-hmm. How many Jake's came? Yeah, I'm going to just go to church with her. You know her family want me to come. You know what I'm saying? Just a little uh, fellowship dinner? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a little this. Just a little that. Then it's a little this. And a little that. Then he trick-or-treating with her and all types of shit. How man. many Jake's you know celebrate Valentine's Day because of a black woman, man? Mm-hmm. Saying that. Saying that, um... Because the black woman coming up to him saying he don't do nothing for her. You know? So, yeah, you, you guys are a big joke. It's, you've been... And, and what you were speaking on earlier, the beautiful point, because what's the difference that you get from, from a white woman and a... Um, a fake-ass white woman. Yeah, and a fake-ass white woman. That believes she needs independence. And that she don't need a man. Which is a fucking oxymoron. There's <laughs> no such thing as an independent woman, man. Woman means servant. How can you be an independent servant, man? Exactly. Independence. You see, you guys are nothing but a bunch of pussy beggars anyway. I'm here for your sisters. And guess what? All the sisters backing you up. That's how you know you're going off, man. You only have, you have very few sisters. You got some sisters that's down with, you know, GMS with the brothers, and they know their position. But you don't have a whole squad of them like IGBK got, man. Yeah, them got, then, then those uh, so-called sisters that's around them be talking shit. Yeah, GMS, they just, they always down in the sisters. And blah, 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 trying to be with these white devils. Look, you need to, the women need to shut the hell up, man. Yeah, let the women uh, keep quiet in the churches, remember? Exactly. Their comments are not necessary, man. Nor will they be taken seriously. Yeah. When we see, that's a weak congregation when there's women in there, just being real. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it, he has quite a few ex-gay people. That's what he said on the, on his on the website with his interview, they have quite a few ex-gay people up in the um up in the up in his church. Yeah, and they probably relapsing, man. <laughs> Cause all them demons you putting on everybody, man. Then your then your little goon coming around with videos talking about don't try this at home. This is a trained professional, authorized by the UPK. Where in the scriptures does it say you got to be authorized by uh, uh, by the UPK in order to teach or authorized by a group of men to teach? You have to be authorized by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah to teach, man. You don't have to be authorized by no man to teach the scriptures. What does the scriptures say? Uh, um... And John, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. What did he say to, well, get Jeremiah uh, chapter 1 verse 5, man. This will be the last cut on the clown, man. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. The Most High authorizes you, man. It ain't UPK. Did it say, before you came out the womb, UPK authorized you? Get, get the fuck out of here. Go ahead, man. Verse 6, then said I, I, Lord Power, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Right, he wasn't. He wasn't properly trained. He wasn't a trained professional. He said, "Stammering lips." Yeah, he said, "I can't even speak. I'm a child, man." He was like, "I don't know how to do this. I don't. I, 
but you have to be a trained professional with them. Then one nigga actually said on the comment boards that I told him I had a witness because he couldn't believe that that they saying that the Lord was that UBK teaches that uh, about the Edomite thing and how the Edomites eat good in the kingdom. So he was like, and I told him I had a witness. He said, man, whatever, man. I don't know who this Kodala Moth is, but if he's part of UPK, I'm sure he ain't never said nothing wrong. That that shows that you're an ass kisser. You're a man follower, man. All because if he's part of the UPK, that means he can't say anything wrong. Why? It's because he's a trained professional? <laughs> Get the hell out of here, man. He said, me and the witness heard wrong. But the scriptures say you go by uh, two, two or two, more, no. yeah, two, two or more, or two or three witnesses, man. All right, go ahead. All right, verse seven. But the Most High said unto me, and you know <clears throat> we ain't even got to bring the witnesses because he said it himself, man. On the comment board, if y'all want to see it, go to GMS Mississippi Burns or Burning, yeah, it's Burns, right? And um. Come. Look up part one, General Yohanna is a joke. Read the comments and he's he lets he lets himself he lets his tongue fall on himself. Go ahead. Verse seven. But the most high said unto me, Say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the most high. Then the Most High put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Most High said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Now, if UPK was on the scene, they were like, Hold on, Jeremiah. Don't try this at home. Little troop. <laughs> Little troop. You smile, and you smile in the scriptures. <laughs> yep. You don't, you don't know what you're doing out here in these trenches. Go ahead and go prophesy in the bedroom or something. When you become a big boy, you can come out here with the commanding general and the captain. Like, what the hell out of here, man. The Lord authorized him, ordained him. The Lord does that with the prophets, man. That's why you have guys like us and the rest of the brothers all around the world able to curse your simple ass out, man. And able to see right through your tactics and able to easily see that you sold out, man. All right, and basically, you got anything else? All right, that's about it. Um, we hope you brothers, the righteous, serious-minded, sincere brothers, were edified by this. And um, till next time, GMS Myth Destroyers, double honest to the elders, honest to the brothers. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shabbat Rakatham Shalom. Shalom.